Hi everyone, my name is Oded from Arc Intelligence and today I want to demonstrate how to use the Paste Curve tool in Environment for Revit plugin. With this tool, you can easily create curves using specific railing types on slab edges, which are floors or roofs, and topography edges. Let's go to the Environment tab and click on the Paste Curve tool icon. A window will open up with a few options. We can see the selection options for the curve path are divided into three categories. First is one continuous edge of a slab, just like this edge of the sidewalk that is selected. I'll hit apply, and we can see how environment created a curve side for this edge. The second one is a loop option. This will select the edge on a perimeter of the whole slab. In this case, I'll pick this traffic island here so the curve will surround it. And lastly, we can pick a specific segment between two points, just like this. If we change our mind about one or more selections, we can click on it again and it would deselect that edge. Here you can see a checkbox for an inbound option. I'll leave it unchecked for now and we'll get back to it later. After clicking on apply, we can see how environment created the curb along the sidewalk we selected. Looking at the floor plan, we see the proposed width of the road is 10 meters wide. So the curb edge was created at the expense of the road. In most cases, this is an unwanted result. The road shouldn't get smaller after planned. To solve this issue, we added the inbound option. Let's go ahead and create a new curb, this time with the inbound option on. It is really important to remember this would not work on roofs or topography, only on a floor model. Let's select the other side of the road. I will keep the inbound option checked and hit apply. We can see we created the same curb, this time it is inside the sidewalk and not at the expense of the road. The road keeps its original size. Closer look shows that the tool not only created the railing, but also an opening in the floor it is hosted. The opening is associated with the size of the railing. This means if we want to change the type of the curb, the opening will adjust accordingly. If we use the split tool and replace one segment to a different type, the opening would automatically update to the same size and align with the curb edge. The paste curb tool is an automation of the railing comment, which means it uses railing types. So how do we find the railing type that we can use for the paste curb tool? Standard Revit railing types consist of a few elements. The horizontal rails are made with a nested profile family. A profile is used to create other families or types in Revit, which we'll learn how to create later in this video. The other elements in railing types are balusters, top rail, and handrail. The railing types that can be used as curbs must not have any balusters, as you can see in this window, nor top rails or handrails. Let's have a look again at the rail structure where we select a profile for the railing. We can have as many profile we want, but all profile must be on zero offset. Environment for Revit will automatically recognize all railing types in your project that can be used as curves. You can find them in the paste curb window in the drop down list. Let's see how we can create a railing for a curb from scratch. On the paste curb window, click on new type and a new window will open up. Here we can see a list of all profiles that environment recognizes as suitable curb profiles. There are default profiles that come with the plugin that you can add on this button. The optional preview panel can show the selected profile. After picking the desired design, I give my new curb a name right here and hit create. In case there is no suitable profile on the shown list, we need to create one. Let's create a profile by editing an existing family. The first thing to remember is to save it as a different profile family. I'll name it Curb Curved and hit save. There are two important things we have to remember when we want to create a new curb profile family. One, it has to be completely on one side of the Y axis, either left or right. That means that if we would have a profile that the axis line crosses like this, 
it would not appear on the profile list. Second, we have to remember to create a single closed loop profile. If the profile would be open or intersecting, it wouldn't appear on the profile list. Let me just fast forward while I shape this curved profile the way I want it. Once I am happy with the design, I'll click on save again and then load into project button. Back in our project window, let's go again to the environment tab and click on the paste curve icon. And click on new type button. In the create new type window, I can open the preview panel to make sure I pick the right profile. I'll give our new curve type a name. In case you don't see the profile you uploaded to the project, go back and check if it meets the requirements. Here I found and selected my profile and I'll hit create. If you just want to replace an existing curve with a new type, you don't have to use the tool. We can close the paste curve window, select the curve we want to replace, and choose another type from the properties panel. Since I chose to have the inbound option on for this curve, you can see how environment automatically adjusts the floor opening and push the curve back to align with the original floor line. Many times we need to show more detailed geometry for placing the curb or edging stone. Using the paste curb tool, we can also have layered edge railing elements. For this example, I want to show you a sexier option for using this tool. I will create a bench with a concrete structure that I would like to apply on the edge of this playground. To create a layered curb railing, we need to have different profiles uploaded into our project. I have created these three profiles earlier. One consists of the base wood floor, the second is the concrete structure of the bench, and the third is the wooden seat on top. Notice how I place the profiles in relation to the origin. When we combine different profiles in the same curve, it is important to remember that they should be in a zero offset, as I mentioned earlier in this tutorial. So when we build a profile family, they all should be relative to the axis origin. Let's create the curve with the base profile through the paste curve window. Notice here in the new type window that we can only select one profile. So after naming the type and click create, I'll have to close the paste curve window and find the railing type in the project browser and go to type properties, where I can add the other layers. I will add them all in the structure and make sure they all lay on zero. I can open the preview window to make sure it looks as intended. I'll choose the material for each profile and hit OK. I would want the bench to sit inside the playground, so the inbound option is checked. After clicking OK, I get this prompt window telling me Revit couldn't make the opening. This can happen when slopes of geometry are too complex. Revit will prompt and mark where it couldn't create the opening. When this happens, you can either edit the floor contour or add floor opening manually by choosing the rail shape. And just remember, it's a regular railing type, so as in like any other, we can always split and adjust the path as we please. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you find this video useful, don't forget to subscribe.